Um, okay, so we're gonna have a seat. And like I said, if you're just joining, if you have a strap, um, it's helpful for this class. If you don't, you can use a belt, you can use a towel, just anything to give you a little more length. I have blocks, I've got a blanket, I have pillows. I just always have a little bit of everything because you never know what you're gonna need in um, getting your flexibility. Sometimes props are just nice. So have your belt nearby. We're gonna start with a little meditation, just a couple minutes, getting ourselves settled in our space. So find whatever space is comfortable. You're welcome to lay down for this. After this, we are gonna be lying down on our back for the first stretch. So you're welcome to start that way. You can start seated, whatever works for you. Go ahead and gently close your eyes and start to take some nice deep breaths. And I want you to start to notice how your body's feeling right now, how your mind is feeling. Maybe you feel scattered, maybe you feel cluttered, maybe you need clarity in your mind and your space and your body. Maybe you feel super clear, maybe you feel very open, maybe you feel really good. Wherever you are, I want you to take notice of that feeling right now. And we're gonna work through those feelings, whether they're good or bad, and work and move, move energy through the body as we go through class. And at the end, we'll take note of how we're feeling. So maybe you wiggle your spine a little bit, roll your shoulders down and back. And go ahead and release all the air out of your body. Release air that's old and stale. Then seal your lips and begin to inhale through the nose. As you inhale, I want you to take note of the breath coming through the body and to the lungs all the way deep into the belly, feel the expansion that's made. Hold it at the top for a moment. Open the mouth, release and let go. Good. We'll do that again, keep the lips sealed. Begin to inhale through the nose, filling all the way up as far as you can go. Feel expansion in the rib cage, the belly, hold it at the top. Open your mouth, exhale, let go. Now just breathe normally and take note of the ebb and flow in the body. Your breath is something that's gonna take you deeper into your practice. Allowing oxygen in through the bloodstream allows joints, muscles, everything. Getting that oxygen is gonna allow for more opening, more space. So I want you to think about that if your mind trickles away, anchor back to your breath. Anchor back to how it affects the mind and body connection. Once you already notice the heart rate coming down, relaxation coming over the body. You're in a safe space with us for the next 60 minutes, enjoying opening the body and mind. So take this time for yourself and enjoy it. Together, let's take one more deep breath in through the nose. Fill up the space in the body with breath all the way to the top. Once you're there, open your mouth, release, exhale, let go. Beautiful. Go ahead, we're gonna start by laying on our backs. I just wanna get us all settled into our space for a moment. We're gonna start laying on our backs. Grab your strap or your belt if you have. You might not need this, it depends again on your flexibility. Some of us are very flexible, some of us might not be. And it's our first stretch, so allow room. Allow for tightness to release. So you're gonna go ahead and lay on your back. Take your strap and just have that so it's on your belly so you have it if you need it. And then grab your knees and bring them into your chest. Maybe you separate them and bring them in toward the armpit and just start to rock left and right. Keep your head on your mat just to protect the neck. Maybe you tuck your chin in slightly. Rocking that low spine in the back, getting a little bit of massage and those muscles starting to open. Good, find stillness. Take the left leg, let it go long. Right knee stays hugged in. Hug it in as tight as you can without lifting your head. Maybe you flex your left foot, the foot that's long, and then just roll out your right ankle, left to right, getting out any creaks and cracks. Good, keeping that hugged in for a moment. Squeeze as deep as you can. If you can't reach the front of your shin, you can always go behind the thigh. 
Next up, you're gonna take your peace fingers or your strap and we're gonna wrap it around the big toe or the bottom of the foot. So whatever works for you. I like a strap just to give me a little more length and it helps with flexibility. So once your strap is wrapped around the ball of your foot or you can grab your fingers to your toes, take your hands and just start to pull your toes toward your face. Keep that left hip down, the left leg straight. If you need to start out with a bend in your knee for flexibility, that's completely fine. A great way to start to build flexibility is start out bending and slowly straightening and finding your layer, finding your edge. Flex your right toes toward your face as you pull that leg in and breathe. Notice if you're clenching your jaw or your face, let go of that tension. A big thing I always like to point out is we sometimes move tension from one part of our body to another. So if you're super tight in your legs and you're stretching, you might start to open those legs, but then you're crunching your face or clenching your jaw and you're just moving tension from one space to another. Where we wanna let that tension out is through our breath. So take deep breaths in through the nose and open up, exhales. Now pull those toes a little closer, take a big inhale. And on the exhale, pull that leg across the body like you're doing a supine twist. Try and keep your right shoulder down. So you're kind of up slightly on the left hip and you're keeping that right leg straight. If you have a slight bend, that's fine. Maybe you're trying to kind of slowly open the leg. Keep your right shoulder down. Maybe your foot comes all the way to the ground. Maybe you're holding it up, but you're still continuing to pull on that strap towards your face and you're gonna feel a nice IT band stretch. The flexibility in our IT bands gets super tight. That's the iliotibial band. That's gonna run the outside of your hip down to your knee, that connection. Those get super tight if you're a runner or if you sit a lot driving or at a desk. We tend to get very tight. So the more you flex your foot and pull the foot towards your head, the more you're gonna feel that IT band open. Again, keep your right shoulder down. So you're getting a little twist in the low back as well. Maybe you're slightly rolled up on the left hip. Take a breath. Anytime you exhale, try and go a little deeper. Maybe on the inhale, you let up slightly or bend a little bit. On the exhale, straighten a little more and go deeper. Good, find one more breath here. Staying for your exhale. On the next inhale, come back through center where we started, on your back. On the exhale, let your foot fall out to the right this time. So we're opening up, but we wanna stay flat on the back. So keep that left hip pulling down. Maybe your left hand palm pulls on that left hip, pushes that glute toward the mat. Maybe that right leg touches the ground or maybe it's in the air. Just go as far as you can until you start feeling that inner thigh stretch. You're getting movement in the joint space of your hip. Your acetabulum is where your joint sits, your ball, the head of your femur. That sits in there and we get that movement. We have synovial fluid that moves in there. We wanna keep all that stuff nice and open, keeping us young in our joints, avoiding arthritis. Now try and pull those toes closer to the head again. Maybe you walk your way up to your strap. Maybe you're starting to get towards your toes. Maybe your leg is bent slightly, you're working your way there. Keep your shoulders and that hip down. We don't wanna be rolling up. We're not gonna get anything for rolled up. So only go as far as you can with that left hip down. Breathe here one more time, big breath in. And allow yourself to stay for that exhale, maybe go a little deeper. On your next inhale, come back through center where we started. You're flat on your back and pull those toes towards you. Maybe you go a little deeper than when you started. Start to already take notice of how you're feeling in your body. You're getting some movement in that joint space. You're opening the backs of the legs, kicking through the ceiling like your heels going to the ceiling. Flex your toes, pull a little deeper. Take a breath, loosen a little. And when you exhale, pull a little deeper. Good, go ahead and release that foot. 
Bring your strap back to your belly if you're using one. Bring both knees in. Hug both knees. Remember, keep the back of your head on your mat. Rock left to right. Take note of how your right leg's feeling compared to the left. Always comparing each side of the body, keeping things even. Now take your right leg long. Left knee stays in, hug that knee in. Tuck your chin to your chest, the back of the head stays on the mat, protect your spine and neck. Roll out your left ankle one way, then the other. Scrunch your toes, get any creaks and cracks out. Make space in your joints. Good. From here, give yourself one more deep squeeze. Again, you can be underneath the thigh if you want. Now you're gonna take your hand and either grab for your big toe or take your strap and wrap it around the ball at the bottom of the foot. Flex your left toes towards your face as if your heel's going through the ceiling. Keep your right hip down and just begin to let gravity pull towards your face. You can flex the right toes as well. Every inhale, maybe loosen slightly. Maybe your knee is slightly bent. You're slowly straightening. And breathe, go a little deeper on the exhales. Again, if you're super tight, you might be up here. That's completely fine. If you wanna try and go a little deeper, maybe bend your knee in. Have a bend in the knee. Bring those toes a little closer and then slowly straighten a little at a time. Maybe your knee stays bent, but you're flexing your toes and really feeling that opening. So find a layer that works for you. If you're super flexible, your foot might be up by your head. Everybody's got their layer. Just keep your hips squared off wherever you are. We're not open quite yet. Take another breath in here. On your exhale, we're gonna roll that foot across the right side of the body. So roll up on the right hip slightly. Keep that leg long and flexed. If you need a slight bend, start there and slowly straighten. Left shoulder is staying down. We're getting a little supine twist in the back, but mainly you wanna feel that IT band, the iliotibial band on the outside of the left leg. Flex your toes of the left foot, slightly up on the right hip. Shoulders are down, only go as far as you can. And again, feel that deep stretch. The more you flex those feet, feel that heel kicking to the side of the room now. Toes flexing towards the face. Feel it happen slowly and gently. Take another breath in here. See if you can go a little deeper on your exhale. Taking our time, really feeling the openings. And on your next inhale, come back through center, roll onto your back. Get yourself situated so you're flat. Flex your toes, pull them towards you. And on the exhale, open up to the left. Again, the right hip stays flat. Maybe you take your right hand, keep it on the right hip, holding it down and only go as far as you can. We don't wanna be rolling up like this. Keep yourself down, keep the back of your head on the mat, protect your spine. And then flex that foot, feel the opening on the inside of that left thigh. You'll even feel a little opening on the right side. Keep that right hip rolling down, you're gonna feel it all open. I like keeping my right foot flexed, it helps me keep the right hip down. Left toes flex, maybe you walk your strap in a little more towards you. Check in with your body. It's so important to check in. Are you crunching your face? Are you clenching your jaw? Take a breath and relax. You're here to release. You're not here to be in pain. You're here to open. We hold a lot in our hips, a lot of emotions, whether it's anger or sadness happiness, we tend to hold tension in different ways. Maybe one day you notice you're super open and another day you might be highly stressed and everything feels tight. Those are emotions we need to release and let go of. Stay for one more breath here, big deep inhale. Nice deep exhale. 
On the next inhale, come back through center where you started. Flex those toes towards your face. See if we can go deeper than where you started. Take note of how you're feeling on this side of the body. Are you more open? Are you more tight? Toes are flexing toward the face. Go a little deeper. Maybe your knee is bent slightly. You're slowly straightening. And go ahead and release. Put your block or put your strap to the side. Bend both knees into the chest. Rock left to right. Now grab the bottoms of the feet and find happy baby. Grabbing the inside, the outside, if those aren't flexible enough, you can grab for your ankles or pull down behind the kneecaps or behind the knees, that little pocket. You can rock left to right. Try and keep your tailbone rolling down to the mat. Keep your back flat. Maybe you straighten your legs. Feel the flexibility and opening you've already made. As we continue to open the hips, release your hands and then rock and roll like a little ball along the spine three or four times because we twist it through the spine. We just want to align it. Come all the way up to a seat. Take your legs behind you. Come to all fours. We're going to move into frog pose. So frog pose is kind of like a split. We're going to open up the inner thighs. If you have knee problems and it hurts to be on the knees, this is where you can put a blanket down the length of the mat or the width of the mat. And you're gonna take your feet so they're close to the edges and you're gonna let your knees splay out. So you're in a frog pose here. <clears throat> it might be hard to see me, I'm wearing black on black, right? So if you notice my knees are splitting open and then the arches of your feet are down like frog legs, okay? So you're gonna slowly start to open. Only go as deep as you can. This is a great place where you could put a pillow or a blanket underneath of you if you want. You can stay on your palms or you can walk yourself to your forearms or lay on a blanket or a pillow here. So just let your knees slowly, gently spread out away from one another. If you have any hip problems, you can do one leg at a time. So stay here wherever you are. If this is not working for you and you have some hip problems, you can always do one leg and straighten the leg and then slowly slide out. So you stay on one knee and do that. And you can switch halfway through. I'll tell you when we're about halfway. So you can do each leg. That's gonna take some pressure off. But if you're able to get in this position, you're gonna feel gravity really work and pull you down. Keep those feet flexed. That's gonna protect the knees and the joints. Anytime you're in these deep stretches that involve the knees being in weird angles, it's really important to keep your feet flexed. That really protects your joints. And it helps give you a deeper stretch. Maybe you notice you can kind of wiggle and go a little deeper. If you are doing one leg at a time, you can go ahead and switch because we're about halfway through. These poses are kind of yin style yoga. Stuff that you can slowly gain flexibility and is a great class to take for flexibility. <clears throat> and this is a space where your eyes can be closed and you notice if you have any emotions come up. And remember to breathe. Let go of the tension in your jaw, in your face, in your hands. Maybe you're clenching your fists or clenching your hands together. These kind of yoga poses, you have to be comfortable with getting uncomfortable. You don't want to be in pain, but uncomfortable mentally, physically. Those are things that you work through and make you stronger. I want you to take two more breaths here. Take them at your own pace, nice and deep. Once you get through that last breath, you're gonna come out of this slowly, taking your time. So first bring your hands up if you're on your forearms, and then you're gonna slowly slide your feet together, sit your hips back and walk yourself in. Your knees slowly come in one at a time, come to all fours, bring your knees together, sit back and give yourself a moment. Close your eyes, take a breath. 
and exhale. Good. Coming back to all fours, we're gonna work on our wrists. So take your wrists. So you can sit with your toes tucked under if you want and sit your hips back. But you're gonna take your hands, palms down first. And just start to wiggle yourself left to right, gaining flexibility in the wrists. And then just do some circles. Try and keep your palm, the base of the hand, all the way down on the mat. Go one way a couple times, then the other. And think of your hands like starfish hands. Keep them nice and wide. This is great for carpal tunnel. These stretches are great if you've got arthritis, getting some movement, breaking up all that garbage that gets all clogged in. Now you're gonna take your hands and flip your palm so the fingers are towards you and your forearms are facing out. So the thumbs are facing to the outside edges of the room, your pinkies are in. And now you're gonna lean back. You're gonna feel a nice forearm stretch. Make sure you're keeping the base of your palms down. Keep your fingers wide, keep your thumbs down. Breathe, that's a good little bit of tension you should be releasing. Deep, deep stretch here. Flexibility in our wrists is so important. Protecting from injuries, especially if you work out or do other yoga practices, we put a lot of tension on our wrists. These are great stretches to do before and after. And then of course, if you're typing or on our phones all day, all those things start to really add up. Good, come forward. Take your hand up. We're gonna re we're gonna flip over so the back of the hand is down on each palm and your thumbs are facing in toward each other. So the other side of the forearm is facing forward. Pinkies are facing out. So you're an upside down high five and then lean back. This one's gonna be a lot more tense. So only go as far as what feels good. But you should be getting a stretch on the opposite side of the forearms. Maybe you try and squeeze your fingers in, but make sure you're keeping the back of the hand down. Feel that stretch. It's almost like you're trying to touch your tips of your finger to your palm, but you're keeping the base of the hand and the wrist down. <clears throat> Feel that nice stretch. Breathing. Good, come up and release slowly out of that. You can sit back on your heels and just roll out the wrists. Good, go ahead and grab your strap and you can keep it around your neck for what we're doing next. Just in case you need it or your belt or whatever you have. Some people need it, some might not. We're gonna start with toe stretches and we're gonna include shoulder stretch at the same time. So come to all fours, tuck your toes and sit your hips back. Now you might stay here. This is a great position. You're gonna feel a lot of tension in the feet and the toes. Just make sure they're tucked and your hips are back. If you want more, come up and sit on your hips. If this is too much and you want a little less, but you wanna sit up to do the shoulder stretch, you can always put a pillow or a block underneath the glutes and that's gonna take a little pressure off. Now, like I said, this is a very intense pose. You're gonna feel a lot of tension in the toes begin to build. It's gonna to start to ignite. That's actually a great feeling. We're trying to cut off the circulation of the toes. So we want the blood to cut off. And what we're gonna do is when we lift off of this, we're gonna feel the blood flush through and it's gonna get all the old crud and everything and help your circulation. If you have plantar fasciitis or any kind of issues with your feet, take your time on this. Maybe you start down here and do it gently or you put the block underneath you, take your time. Already your feet should be feeling on fire. Now, if you want, we'll take a nice little pose. I'm gonna show you from behind what I'm doing, but you're gonna take your hands out to the side. And this is where you might need your strap. Take your left palm and flip it and come up your back in between the shoulder blades or as far as you can. And then the right hand stays facing forward and reach for those fingers. If you can't touch your hands completely fine, use a strap and you can walk your hands toward each other as close as you can. If you don't have a strap, you can just grab onto maybe your bra or your shirt or whatever you have capable of grabbing. And then push your head back, try and sit up nice and tall. 
Think of elongating through the spine, keeping the head tall, protecting the neck. You should really be feeling that stretch in the toes right now. Breathing. Take one more deep breath in. Feel that intensity on the exhale. Slowly release the hands, come back up. Bring your palms in front of you. Slowly untuck the toes and then tap the tops of the feet slowly, gently. It's gonna feel like a lot at first, but it'll feel good once that blood flows through. Good, maybe you scrunch your toes gently. Keep the tops of your feet on the mat. We're gonna stretch the ankles, get a little flexibility on the tops of the feet. So you can sit back here. If you have any issues with your ankles, maybe you stay here. If you want the next layer, come up and sit back. <clears throat> the final one is gonna be bring your hands back. Maybe you stay here and lift the knees up. Get a couple snap crackle pops, lay back. You want to balance here, you can bring your hands to your knees or out in front of you, hands to heart center. Feel that nice little stretch to the front of the feet and the ankles. Slowly come out, bring your hands behind you if they're not already there. Let your knees down first, walk forward, come to all fours, roll out your ankles gently. And then guess what? We get to do it again. So we gotta get the other side of the shoulders. So once your feet feel ready, tuck your toes back under. They should feel a little more open for this round. You can sit your hips back. Remember your layers, you can stay here. You can come up, you can put a block under. But start to sit there and feel that. Hopefully it's gonna build again. You're gonna feel that intensity. The more you do this stretch, the deeper and longer you can stay in it. This stretch used to just completely kill me. And I do it all the time now and I don't, I can sit in it for a while. So you just build on things like this. All right, go ahead and take your arms out. If you need your strap, remember to grab your strap. This time, flip your right palm so the thumb is down and bring that hand up the back, close to the shoulder blades as you can go. Again, you can grab onto your shirt, your bra, your whatever you have. If you have your strap, you can drop it down your back. Then that top arm, and you might notice you're more or less flexible on that side, that's normal. So maybe on one side you can grab a hand and the other side you can't. Oh, that's normal. This side I'm always a little tighter on. Remember, push your head back, try and sit up tall. This is kind of a nice tricep stretch, shoulder stretch. Find another deep breath in this position. Stay all the way through to the exhale. How are those toes feeling? Slowly release out of this, wiggle the arms out. Bring your hands in front of you and get that toe release, untuck the toes. Tops of the feet, meet the mat, tap them out gently. Feel that nice blood flow. So good for your circulation, really good for the feet. Same thing, we'll sit back. You can stay here on the ankles, sit up, or come back and tip. Get those last little stretches out of the feet. Good, bring those knees down. Come back to all fours. You can set your strap to the side. Starting to get the shoulders open a little bit. So let's move into a nice shoulder stretch. This is gonna be a really, you can make this as deep as you want or not. So if you've got any shoulder problems, you can really just press a little or a lot. It's all up to you. This is where you'll start to learn your flexibility. I have a blanket, a pillow, or block something that will support your head in case you need it. Some people need it, some people don't, but just have it at the top of your mat for in case. You're gonna be laying on your belly, all the way flat, feet are top on the tops, and then come down. Hands are gonna be out to a T. Make sure your arms are directly in alignment with your shoulders so your hand is in alignment. And you can rest your face down. So make sure we're in this T. From here, turn your left cheek to the mat. This left arm is gonna stay straight. 
palm is down like you're high-fiving the floor. So you can watch me first. If you've done my class before, you've probably done this with me. This is a great one for the shoulders, my favorite shoulder stretches, alligator, crocodile pose. All right, so you're gonna start to put, push away with your right hand. And you're gonna keep that left arm long. You're gonna feel the left shoulder begin to open. Now this is where you can put a block or a pillow underneath your cheek if you want. And you just start to push, maybe you roll up onto your side of your hips if you can. Maybe this right arm comes back and this is where it becomes crocodile. You're trying to make crocodile hands here. If you wanna go even further, the full extension is supposed to roll onto your back. And you're gonna really feel a stretch in the shoulder. But like I said, if you've got rotator cuff problems, if you have any kind of tears or issues with your shoulder girdle, only go as far as you want. Feel that as soon as your body says no, stop and just stay there and feel the stretch slowly begin to happen. Remember this left palm is still down. Your head is resting on a block, maybe the mat, maybe a pillow. And like I said, you may just be slightly up. You may be slightly rolled up. I want everybody to listen to their body because this can be very intense. Breathe. Unclench your jaw, release your tongue. Take two more nice deep breaths at your pace. Remember on every exhale, release tension. Maybe you push a little deeper, just slightly, maybe a millimeter is all you get, but every little bit counts as long as your body is okay with it. This is where you start to build that flexibility. Last breath. Wherever you are, if you're on your back, if you're able to roll it far, start to slowly roll yourself out. You're gonna meet where we started. On your belly, hands out to a T. So come back to your belly. You can have that block nearby or whatever you're using for your neck if you need it. We're gonna do the same exact thing. Make sure we're tops of our feet are flat. On the belly, right arm is long. It's in alignment with the shoulder, one long line. Make it a big T. Right palm is down like you're high-fiving the floor. Push yourself away. Again, this is where you can put a block or a pillow. Maybe you stay here. If you need to, you can bend that knee up for support. If you wanna keep going, you can reach this arm back and try and clasp. If you wanna continue on, maybe you roll that foot back. Just make sure whatever's happening, that right arm, that you're the right shoulder, make sure the right arm is staying long. So if it starts to slide or move, you've gone too far. And if you wanna to go to full extension, you can come onto your back and rest. Notice how this side feels. Maybe you can go deeper on this side. Maybe it's more tense. This feels so good as a post-workout stretch. You had a shoulder day, or after you did a lot of yoga, maybe if you did vinyasa flows, you're doing a lot of that up and down chaturangas. This is a great stretch to open that shoulder girdle. Find a couple more breaths here. Try and go that little bit deeper. I want you to go to your edge. That's where your flexibility begins to change. When you get to that edge, right where you feel like you can't go any further, go that little millimeter, as long as we're not injuring or in deep pain. You can do these stretches while you're watching TV or doing, listening to a book or anything. These are great stretches to do. A few times a week, you'll notice such a change in your flexibility very quickly. Find one more deep breath in. 
Find that nice exhale out. Good. Take your time if you're on your back. Slowly begin to push yourself up on your hip first. Roll back to the belly. Come back to that T. Bring your palms underneath your shoulders. You can move that block out of the way. And you're gonna keep your palms underneath your shoulders. Your tops of your feet are on your mat. Moving into seal pose, we're gonna push ourselves up and see how far you can go. Almost making an L with your body. Maybe you will push your palms back closer to you. Press your chest forward. Shoulders are coming down and back. Away from the ears, chin can come to the chest. Stay here and breathe. If this is too much, come to your forearms and do a sphinx pose. Both are great on the spine, great, or, or both are great for flexibility. And then maybe work your way up. Now, if you want more, you can start to bend the knees. Keeping your thighs on your mat, keeping the pelvis down. Good, if you want even more, you can reach back for your left foot with your left hand. Your right leg can come down for balance or you can leave it up. Feel a twist. Maybe you get a couple snaps, crackles, pops in your back. Again, you don't have to go to this layer. This is just a nice deep stretch. Pull that foot towards you. Release down, reset, bring your chest down for a moment. Rest your forehead and give yourself a breath or two. Good, and move right back where you were. Maybe you stay in Sphinx or come up to your seal pose. Breathe here. You can bend those knees in again if you want. If you want more, this time right arm reaches back. Reach for that right foot. You can always use a strap here or a belt or a towel. Pull that foot in, twist. Get some nice cracks out of the back. Let your pelvis melt down. And release your foot. Come all the way back down. Tops of the feet are on the mat, rest your forehead. Take a breath here. Stay for your exhale. You're gonna push yourself back, bring your knees together, press yourself up and back to embryo pose. Embryo pose is a little bit like child's pose. Keep your toes together though, and knees stay together instead of out. Then rest your forehead down. If you can't reach your forehead down, this is where you can use a pillow or a block here. If you can go all the way down, perfect. And then bring your hands by your sides. Wherever you are, let your forehead rest on something flat and hard. We're putting pressure on the forehead and it's starting to allow you to relax and release. Let your shoulders droop down, let everything just rest. Embryo pose is such a great pose if you're having anxiety or need to release and relax. It's a great pose. You're at a tight ball, so you're putting pressure on your body and the lymphatic system. You're putting pressure on the forehead. And that's a great spot to allow yourself to relax and ignite the parasympathetic nervous system, which is your calming, relaxing part of the nervous system. Breathe. Good, find one more breath. Stay for your exhale and bring your hands back out in front of you. Come to all fours. You can have your block off to the side if you need and then come to a seated position. We are going to work on fire log pose or double pigeon as some call it. You can have a block or a blanket near you if you'd like. That might help with this. I'll give you options for this. So this can be a very deep pose 
What you're gonna do is start with your legs out in front. And we'll move into this. Take a deep breath in. And then pull yourself forward and reach for your toes to start. Just a nice little forward fold to get ourselves warmed up. Now, anytime we're in forward fold, I always like to show this from the side. A lot of people might be reaching for their toes, can't reach them. Option to bend the knees and reach. Then slowly walk your feet away. But what we don't want to do is pull our neck down and try and reach our knees. Think of pressing your chest towards your thighs. That's where your flexibility begins. So instead of putting strain, you're allowing yourself to really flex and feel the backs of the legs open. Toes are flexed back, you're pulling your toes back. Other option, strap. If you can't reach your toes, wrap your strap. Sit up tall and pull yourself. None of this. Think of long, tall spine, walking and working your way down. Now, if you can get your chest all the way to your, your thighs, that's when you can release your head down. But you need to be touching your thighs, so it depends on your flexibility. But I love this stretch for really building flexibility because you can start with your knees bent and work them until you can't go any further. And some people don't think they can touch their toes because you start out like this and you're reaching and it just doesn't work. Whereas if you allow yourself to work with the body, one leg at a time, both legs, you slowly make yourself into a new space you didn't know you could get into. Everybody's rushing to touch their toes. It's gonna take time, you gotta work through. And remember to breathe and release and relax. We're just setting up for firewall pose here in a second. Maybe you slowly are working your way down. Good, if you are resting, slowly walk yourself up. Big breath in and big breath out. Good, I'm just gonna face back towards you. Go ahead and moving into fire log pose, we're gonna take our right foot in first. And then you're going to stack the left ankle on top of the right knee. And the left knee is on top of the right ankle. So your right leg is on the bottom, left leg's on top. Now, if your leg is up like this and won't reach, this is where you could put a block or a pillow. If none of that's feasible, just simply cross your legs, crisscross, just like that. Nothing too crazy. Either way, trust me, if you can't do this and you can't do the crisscross, you're gonna get a stretch and eventually you can go through this. Now your goal is to have your legs stacked completely on top of each other and make sure that you're sitting nice and tall. You're gonna feel this on the outside of your IT bands, which I talked about earlier, outside of your hip down to your knee. So this is layer one, maybe it's layer two for some if you're crisscross. Then you can start to walk your hands in front of you. And this is the same thing as I showed you a second ago. We don't want to arch to try and reach. Walk yourself up, chin is up, chest is working our way down. Okay, this is like a double pigeon, fire log pose, whatever you want to call it. And once your chest meets your thighs, you can rest your head. Or you could use a block here to rest as well. Whatever works. Remember, anytime we're doing anything with the knees bent off to the sides, keep our feet flexed. That's gonna protect the joints and it's gonna give you that deeper stretch. You don't wanna have your toes pointed. So flex the toes in toward the midline. Flexing forward, breathe. Notice the stretch you're getting. When the left leg's on top, that's the one, whatever leg's on top, that's the one you're gonna feel more of the stretch in on the IT band. Your right leg on the bottom is still getting a little something, but. The top leg is the stretch. Notice where you're holding tension. You've gotten your hips pretty open, so they should start to feel pretty good. Take one more nice deep breath in. Open mouth, exhale. If you're down, slowly walk yourself back up, no rush. Good, always remember which leg's on top. Straighten the legs slowly out where we were a second ago. 
flex your toes, sit up nice and tall, and then slowly stretch forward like we just did before the double pigeon. See how you're feeling. Maybe you can go a little deeper. Flex those toes back. Remember, get deeper stretch. If you need to bend in the knees and slowly straighten the legs, that's perfectly fine. Take your time here. We're just here for one more breath, just a little way to reset. And then slowly work your way back up. And you're just gonna switch. So whichever leg was on the bottom, we started with the right. So we're gonna have the left leg on the bottom. Pull that heel in towards you, kind of make it parallel at the top of your mat, and then stack. Right ankle over left knee. And then your right knees over the left ankle. Now again, this is where you can crisscross, so just simply move your leg in front, and you'll still feel a stretch when you fold forward. If you're in the double pigeon, try and have your legs really stacked so they're just on top of each other. If you need, you can put a bellow pillow or a blanket if your knee isn't touching the ankle. That's a great spot, spot to really help with moving into a no flexibility level. Flex the feet, work your way down if you want. Remember, back stays flat as you work your way down. Once your chest touches your legs, that's when you're allowed to fold. We don't want to fold too early or you're just straining the neck and back. And you're losing out on the flexibility we're working through. Toes are flexed in toward the midline. Let your head hang. You're feeling your IT band this time, the right side, the other side should be feeling it. Nice opening. Take one more deep breath in. Stay all the way for the exhale till it's empty breath. If you're folded forward, slowly walk yourself in. Come all the way up. Take your legs, undo them, stretch them out in front of you. This time just shake them out. Moving into a butterfly pose. Bring the bottoms of your feet together. Knees out wide. If this is too deep for you, you can put blocks underneath your knees. Now it's the same thing. I want you to grab your feet and I want you to sit up tall. Shoulders are down and back, pulling your feet towards you. Push your knees down if you can. You've gotten a lot of opening in your knees and flexibility. Then slowly start to pull yourself down. This is the same thing we've been doing with every stretch, the last three stretches. We don't want to arch forward. You don't want to bring your head down until your chest meets your feet. Stay just like that. Keep pulling. I'm just showing you from, these, from the side so you kind of get a better idea of what my back is doing. See how straight my back is? Pulling the chest through first. We're not doing this. That does nothing. Sit up tall. Pull through. This is where you can press your elbows. If they reach, you can press your thighs down so they meet the floor. You can bring a block here and rest your forehead if you want. Maybe you find a lower layer and then eventually to the floor. Once you're rested with your head, that's when you can allow your, or your chest, you can allow your head to rest. The closer your heels are in towards your groin, the harder the stretch will be. The further your feet are away from you, usually the deeper you could go. Just make sure that back is straight. Think of pushing your chest down first. I want you to take two more breaths. See if you can go a little deeper on each exhale. Hips should be nice and open. And on your next inhale, push yourself back up and lean back. 
If you need to, you can close your legs or you can close them with your hands on the outside of your knees. Knees stay bent. Tuck your chin into your chest. Arch to the spine, you're gonna slowly roll all the way down one vertebrae at a time. Let the head be the last thing that comes down. Good. Kind of back to where we started. Bring your knees into your chest. Rock left to right. Massage the low back. Try and keep the tailbone down. Now keep the right knee in and squeeze it. Let the left leg go long. We're just gonna get one more supine twist, but this time your leg will stay straight. You can roll out your ankles a little bit here. They might be a little tight from some of the stretches we did. Take that right knee. You're gonna pull it across the left side body. Keep your right shoulder down. So if your right shoulder starts to come up, you're not gonna get the back twist. We're concentrating on your low spine more than the leg this time. If you need something, you can sit a pillow or a blanket underneath that knee to help. If you can go all the way down and your right shoulder stays down, that's great. But no matter what, keep the right shoulder down for the supine twist. Gaze off to the right. If you want more, you can grab for that foot and straighten the leg. But what I want you to concentrate on mostly is the supine twist for the low lumbar spine. If you have spine problems, don't twist as deep or skip this twist altogether. Just listen to your back. On your next inhale, come back onto your back. Have both knees back in. This time, right leg goes long, left knee stays squeezing in. Staying right here. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Take an inhale. And on the exhale, supine twist to your right. So left knee comes to the right side body. Notice the left shoulder stays down. You're rolling up on towards your right hip. Gaze off to the left, that's gonna keep the left shoulder down. Again, if you wanna straighten that leg and grab for it with your foot, you can, or with your hand, grab your foot. Concentrating on feeling that spinal twist. Anything twisting is super detoxifying for your body, very good for you. Gets out all the garbage puts pressure on your internal organs in a new way and builds flexibility in the spine. A lot of injuries happen when we're twisting or bending. Maybe you twist to pick something up and you feel your back go out. Doing these kind of stretches are what they're gonna prevent that. Slowly bend your knee. If it's straight, come back onto your back. Hug both knees in, rock left to right. Move back into your happy baby where we started. Grab the bottoms of your feet here. Maybe you can reach your ankles or maybe you want the backs of your legs. Wherever you are, I don't want you up like this. Think of rolling the tailbone down, pushing the knees down towards the earth. Feet are flat like they're stepping on the ceiling. Maybe you rock, give that spine a little massage. Your head is down, you're protecting the spine. Good, now hug both knees in and rock and roll along the spine after your twists. You should feel really good. Just align the spine after twisting. And then meet on your back. Hug your knees in. This time you'll bring your forehead to your knees. Squeeze yourself into a tight little bowl. bowl. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Take a breath in and exhale out to your Shavasana pose. This is your final pose and it's the most important pose. It's part of the sequence. We do it for a reason. This is where your muscles begin to release and relax and make the space that you've worked so hard for. Lactic acid that builds up and puts knots in our body and our muscles. This is where it releases. So notice your feet kind of just fall out to the side naturally, your palms slightly curl to the fingers. 
Your eyes are resting in their sockets. Unclench your jaw if you're clenching. Release the tongue from the roof of the mouth. Take some breaths here. And some nice release. I'll bring you back in a few minutes. So just enjoy the space you've built. Remember, this is part of the sequence. You really want to stay through your Shavasana to your final pose. I'll bring you back in just a couple. of course, welcome to stay in Shavasana and continue to rest, or you can begin to bring awareness back into the body. Maybe wiggle the fingers and your toes, massage the back of the head left to right, awakening the nerve endings, then start to roll out your wrists, your ankles. Take deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth, nice and gentle. Awakening the body. Slowly bring your arms up overhead if you want a nice good morning stretch, pulling your body apart, reaching your toes and your fingers in opposite directions. And when you're ready, tuck your knees in to your chest and roll over to your left or right side into the fetal position. Resting your cheek on your bicep for a moment, finding a space of safety and comfort, building gratitude. And when you feel ready, you can meet in a seated position with your eyes closed and your hands together at heart center. No rush to get there. Your head is bowed. Thinking over your practice, scanning your body, noticing how you feel mentally and physically and emotionally, what you let go of, what you don't need to take with you and allow yourself to be blind. Bring your thumbs up to third eye center, a space of intuition, a space of open-mindedness, open-minded with ourselves, open-minded to one another, bowing forward, namaste. Thank you all so much for being present and coming and sharing the space with us.